All right, let's get more on the Yuan with Anthony Chan, Managing Director and Chief Economist at Chase. Anthony, good to see you. Good to be here. So, Anthony, the Yuan dropping to an eight and a half year low, on track to have its worst performance in over a year. What is going on? Well, I think uh, you said it best. Uh, the U.S. dollar is getting stronger. In fact, the dollar uh, earlier this year was actually depreciating on a year-to-day basis by more than 3 percent. Right. And now, if you look at the DXY, it's actually up 2.2 percent. On top of that, we know that uh, we have a new administration that's going to try to stimulate economic growth. We're going to see interest rates rising. That generally leads to a stronger dollar, and that doesn't mean that the Chinese currency has to chase the U.S. dollar. So this is more about the dollar and less about the yuan. I think at this uh, point, uh, so far, it is more about the U.S. dollar. Uh, and by the way, other currencies have depreciated a lot more against the U.S. dollar. If you look at the Mexican peso, for right. example, it is down about 19 percent on a year-to-day basis. The, the Chinese currency is down a little close to 6 percent on a year-to-day basis. The Mexican peso reacting to some things that President-elect Trump said during the campaign. And uh, Trump was also very vocal with his China bashing during the campaign. Uh, he accused China of devaluing the currency on purpose to be more competitive in terms of jobs, in terms of exports. And now we see the yuan dropping on his presidency. You've got to appreciate some of the irony over there. But how much of his rhetoric is impacting the yuan? How much of what he said, for example, saying that he will call China a currency manipulator on day one, is actually registering in the forex markets. Well, remember, calling a, current, a country a currency manipulator doesn't automatically mean that action has to take place. You can make the label and then decide what to do about it. So we'll have to wait and see. So far in the last couple of days, we haven't seen as much of this rhetoric on China as we saw during the campaign. So we really have to wait uh, a little bit longer. But right now, when you look at the president-elect's policies, he's going to increase infrastructure expenditure, which means stimulate the economy. Mm -hmm. He's going to lower personal taxes. He's going to lower corporate taxes. Uh, and of course, repatriation, which is going to bring more, more money to the United States. All those things put together are, in fact, dollar positive, dollar strength positive. And so right now, you don't have all those forces in China. And when you look at the Chinese renminbi vis-a-vis -vis the, the basket of currencies that they talked about two years ago that they were really going to target against, it's a lot more stable against that basket. But in the meantime, the yuan, the renminbi, has depreciated. That does have some positive impacts. Have we seen any of those bear fruit? with regards to exports, for example? Well, of course, you're going to see the exporters actually uh, celebrating a little bit because now their products are a lot more competitive. Of course, if we move to a situation where there is uh, a movement on uh, maybe trade restrictions, the fact that the Chinese renminbi is this week, it gives them an opening bargaining position to say, well, we can strengthen the renminbi a little bit from here once it's uh, much, much weaker. So I, I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist. But that's a possibility if you're going to negotiate strengthening the currency. But I've been to China over 35 times, and I remember when the renminbi was at eight and a quarter. So from back then, when I started going to China in the 1990s, the renminbi is more than 16 percent stronger against the U.S. dollar, even till today. So with all this talk about a potential trade war, Trump saying that he could impose a 45 percent tariff on Chinese goods, you're saying that the lower RMB could be strategic for China going forward? I think in a negotiation, anything is possible. I, I don't think anything has been said or, in fact, right. mentioned. But these are all possibilities. That's an interesting point. But in the meantime, the weaker you want, good for exports, but bad in terms of capital flight. How much of a concern is that for the PBOC? And, and what action do you expect them to take? Well, you have to realize that China still has capital control. So yes, there will be some capital flight. But if you look at, even when you look at the capital flows from month to month, you've seen that the preponderance of the weakness uh, in the currency, uh, or, or the capital flows for that matter, have been mostly due to valuation effects. That once you have these valuation effects and you take into account, the actual capital flows has been only a fraction of, of the actual numbers that are being reported. Anthony, to what level do you see the RMB dropping? And do you anticipate any kind of measures? from the People's Bank of China? Well, I think that some measures have already been taken. Uh, I think that over time, the renminbi will continue to weaken. And I would not be surprised if you exceed 7 
yuan to the to the us dollar in the not too distant future over the next couple months but again this is a very slow steady process and once you start to raise short term interest rate janet yellen and a whole slew of other fed officials just in the last 48 hours have said they want to raise interest rates and inflation is starting to pick up because of all this demand you got to remember in the united states we've got an unemployment rate below 5% and yet we're administering all this fiscal stimulus. Right. All this growth is going to make the U.S. dollar stronger. Well, Anthony, you touched on the Fed, and I'm glad you mentioned that, because all signs are pointing to a December rate hike. Do you agree, and what impact would that have on the dollar, which strengthen it even further? So what would the fall-on effect be? Well, it's clear that it's going to strengthen the dollar a little bit more. In fact, if you look at the Fed futures markets right now, they're pricing in a Fed tightening at the second day of that meeting on December 14th with virtually 100% probability. Historically, whenever that probability is over 70%, the Fed does, in fact, listen and actually acts. Now at close to 100%, it's near to a certainty right now. All right, we'll see how that plays out. As always, thank you for your time and insight. Anthony Chan, Managing Director and Chief Economist at Chase.